You being you as a woman. How does this hold the key to perfect health? Remember those days when your period wouldn't come on time, or when it did, the pain and flow would keep you on house arrest for days? Or maybe that wasn't much of a thing for you. You only had problem skin, weight issues, and crazy mood swings. Or maybe now is the time when it has hit you. You tire more easily, you're gaining weight, your skin tone is changing. Maybe your hair is falling out or you're experiencing hot flashes, headaches, and, of course, something we women have long been associated with, you're anxious, depressed, and low in self-confidence. And yet, you haven't realized that it has anything to do with you being you as a woman. What does that mean, you being you as a woman? Before we explain to you what we mean by this, you need to consider the following symptoms. Do you experience irregular, heavy, scanty, or painful menses, or PMS? Do you experience other symptoms, such as deep dryness of the body, vascular changes, headaches, or irregular heartbeat, changes in the tone of skin or muscles, weight gain, loss of bone density or thinning hair, anxiety, hot flashes, vaginal dryness or loss of libido? If you are facing any of the symptoms just mentioned, or if you are a woman who recognizes the importance of creating balance today to maintain your health for a lifetime, it is vital that you listen to this real-life experience of a woman who fought medical apathy, questioned limiting medical opinions, and opened the doors of hope and health to thousands of people across the globe. A recipient of the Charaka Award for Excellence in Ayurvedic Teaching, with the honorable title Ayurveda Charya, respected teacher of Ayurveda, we're talking about Mary Thompson, a founding member and former secretary of the California Association of Ayurvedic Medicine. Mary Thompson graduated from the very first class of the California College of Ayurveda in 1997. She is now a senior teacher at the college. A clinical Ayurvedic specialist and Panchakarma specialist, Mary answers some questions that will leave you rethinking how you feel about yourself and your body. She will guide you in transitioning from a place of physical and emotional suffering to a place of vitality, radiant health, and joyful confidence. Today, Mary has something deeply moving and impactful, an important experience that every woman can learn from to share with you. When I was 34 years old, I was diagnosed with uterine fibroids. These are usually benign tumors, but because their location and their form, it couldn't be known that they were non-cancerous from ultrasound alone. I was advised to have exploratory surgery so the doctors could get a closer look at them. I was raised mainstream in the United States. My mother was a nurse. I thought doctors knew everything, so I willingly signed up for the surgery. I asked that if the tumors were non-cancerous, that the uterus be left in place. This was against the advice of more than one doctor. I had to sign several documents to this effect. I was told time and again that I was already 34. The fibroids had probably interfered with my ability to have children, and it was unlikely that I would have children at my advanced age. They told me it was unlikely that I would ever have children. They pointed out that if I wasn't going to have children, it was no, made no sense to keep the uterus in place. Still, I asked them to leave it. After the surgery was complete, I woke in the recovery room in the most pain I have ever experienced in my life. They had had to cut through the abdominal wall to get a look at the fibroids. I had stitches both externally and internally. It would take me six weeks or more to be able to drive, to do any work, or to even vacuum. I was relieved to hear that the fibroids were, not, were benign. There was no cancer at all. But in the next breath, they told me that they had left two fibroids in place. When I asked them why, they said because to take them out would have jeopardized the health of the uterus. And since I had insisted that they leave the uterus if it was non-cancerous, that I was to be blamed for the fact that they had left these in. They again told me that I would simply have to have the surgery again in the future, and at that time, they would go back and they would take the uterus. They predicted it may be a year or two that I'd have the surgery again. I was distraught. Here I was, not even out of the recovery room, and they were already booking my return. When I'd recovered more fully, I asked my primary care doctor more about the fibroids. What had caused them? What could I do 
to remove them? And what could I do to avoid needing surgery in the future? Each of my questions was met with a shrug. Because of my age and the type of fibroids that existed, this was anomalous. There was no reason why I should have had these. He didn't see anything I could do that would prevent my needing surgery in the future. He didn't know when, but he was certain I would need surgery. And as to the idea that I could improve the health of my reproductive tract and possibly have a child later, he met me with compassion. He felt very bad about the fact that I was already too old to consider this a possibility. My entire belief system in the infallibility of doctors was shattered. He didn't know. Medication and surgery were the only tools in his toolkit. I had to find another way. And if I was going to find another way, I had to do it myself. I was committed to avoiding another surgery and getting as healthy as possible. This commitment led me to Western herbalism and natural healthcare practices. One day in an herb class, the teacher said the word Ayurveda. I raised my hand, I stopped her. I had to know more about this word. She wrote the word on the board. She gave me some book titles and then asked me to wait and ask more about it later. The rest of the class flew past. I don't remember anything I learned that day other than the word Ayurveda and the knowledge that I had to find out more about this. From the class, I went directly to a bookstore and got five books on Ayurveda and began to pour over them. I learned about the elements, the doshas, the causes of imbalance. I looked at my diet and my lifestyle and I realized that I was responsible for this condition. I had created this imbalance in myself. But because I knew I had created it, I also knew that it was in my hands and in my power to correct it. This began my informal study of Ayurveda for my own health. Eventually, by commitment to Ayurvedic self-care, including huge changes in my diet and lifestyle, I recovered the health of my reproductive system. After being told at the age of 34 that conception was unlikely, I gave birth to my son when I was 43. He was born at home with my family and friends around in a drug-free birth. I believe, and I know, that we have the opportunity in every moment to choose greater health and happiness or to turn away from it. I believe that each person has the ability and the responsibility to know the self and to make choices for their physical, mental, and emotional benefit. And what can you do to really take responsibility for yourself? I have seen Ayurveda transform my own life in the recovery of my reproductive system and the birth of my son. This was for me the hallmark of Ayurveda's effect. Beyond my physical health, the deepening of my understanding of the self helped me to develop greater compassion for others. I healed from old and deep emotional wounds by moving to more clarity and acceptance using Ayurvedic psychology. My sense of happiness and satisfaction with my life is directly related to my experiences with Ayurveda. One client in particular stands out when I think of transformations. This woman came in to see me with chronic fatigue. She was only able to work and sleep. When I met her, she was dressed in grays and blacks. Her hair was disheveled. Self-care seemed beyond her. Her quality of life was very low and she was deeply, deeply unhappy. In this instance, I assessed this as a kappa imbalance. I made some herbal, dietary, and lifestyle recommendations. Mostly, I wanted her to stretch and to draw prana into her body. I wanted her to move more. I needed her to breathe more deeply. I wanted her to stretch in the morning, in bed if she needed to, to drink more water during the day, and to take a short walk at a park that was in between her workplace and her home. She felt that the walking was beyond her, so I advised her to stop at the park anyway, to sit and to watch other people walking. She was okay with the stretching. She was okay with drinking more water, but walking, that wasn't gonna happen. I was positive in my suggestion to her, but both she and I were skeptical of the benefits of going to a park and sitting to watch other people walking. I didn't share the skepticism with her, though she did share her skepticism with me, and we agreed to meet again in a few weeks. After a few weeks, the transformation was remarkable. She was wearing bright colors. She'd had her hair done. She was wearing makeup. And most important to me, she was smiling. She hadn't taken the herbs because she had an allergic reaction to them when she first started. She did the morning stretching. She drank more water. But the change in her really occurred because of her shift in exercise. As I had advised her, she went and she sat down in that park and she began to watch other people walking. And as she watched them, she said to herself, well, I can do that. And she walked that first day, maybe an eighth of a mile, but she went back the next day 
and walked a little more. And the next day she walked a little bit more. By the time she came back in to see me, she was walking two miles a day. She was also staying up now five hours after the end of her workday. Her morning yoga routine, her morning stretching routine, had become a full 20-minute yoga routine. The reason this was so moving to me is that both she and I could clearly see that this simple shift had so positively impacted every aspect of her life. A change in movement became a change in self-care. A change in self-care spilled over into all aspects of her life. She continued over time to incorporate more Ayurvedic dietary and lifestyle practices. She came back into a state of physical health, balanced energy, and happiness. I am so moved by the profound effect of these simple changes. When you look at the world, through the lens of Ayurveda, you see the doshas at play in the individual and in the movement of the day, the season, and the life. You see the doshas in how we look and how we think and how we act. Through that lens, I understand what is real about a person and what's not. The effect of the doshas is mutable. The person behind the dosha is the real one. I believe that we need to seek that person behind the dosha. And how can we seek the person behind our own dosha? The Ayurvedic Experience is proud to present The Ayurvedic Woman. Experience symptom-free health by Ayurvedacharya Mary Thompson. A high-definition program in three parts. The Ayurvedic Woman is the complete Ayurvedic guide to health issues particular to women that will guide those of you in your younger years to enjoy radiant years of acne-free, PMS-free, energetic, productive life with all five signs of good health. It will show you the way to get rid of the fearful symptoms of painful nights, embarrassing hot flashes, uncomfortable sweating, hard to manage bleeding irregularities, weakness, fatigue, depression, or mood swings. If you're in your later years, it will enable a comfortable, confidence-boosting transition into the next phase of your life. Enter into a stage of grace, ease, sexual freedom, and new, wholesome self-discovery. Most importantly, this program will help you experience true, symptom-free health. Before we tell you more about this course, we want you to know what Mary said when we asked her what motivated her to teach Ayurveda, to create this course, and to share her experience with the world. She said, I want to educate and empower women to take charge of their reproductive health. Every month, we have the opportunity to assess how we're managing the stress of our body and to get a glimpse into the impact of stress. Through education, we learn the language of the body. We can interpret our regularity of menses and the quality of the menstrual flow to understand the impact of the doshas on the body. Without this education, we may think that an imbalance is normal, or we may seek treatment that will relieve the symptom but will not eradicate the cause. I believe we have the power in our hands to eliminate the causes of reproductive challenges. And I wanna share that knowledge to give women that power to improve their overall health and to improve their lives. In looking at menopause, I wanna advocate for women to consider self-care prior to menopause. By learning the effect of the hormones, we can apply practices to support balance when those hormones are no longer being produced. I want to educate and advocate for women to use natural treatments to alleviate symptoms they may experience prior to or during menopause so that they can have control over their mental and physical health. Life can be very long after menopause and it's best if those years can be symptom free, not driven by the symptoms of menopause. Your health is in your hands. This course is designed to give practical dietary and lifestyle recommendations to all women so that women can apply these to their lives today to create better health now and in the future. Having seen the effects of Ayurvedic principles on myself in regulation of the menstrual cycle, elimination of symptoms of PMS, elimination of cramping and extreme menstrual discomfort. I've dealt with the recovery of the health of my reproductive system after dire warnings from doctors. And having gone through menopause smoothly, I feel qualified and obligated to share these principles with as many women as possible. This program contains three parts. Part one is titled Introduction to Ayurveda. In this section, Mary will take you from What is Ayurveda? 
through a comprehensive look at the Ayurvedic view of health and disease to a deep understanding of the doshas and datus, giving you the tools you need to have a deep understanding of yourself from the Ayurvedic perspective. Part two is titled, Applying Ayurvedic Principles to Female Reproductive Health During the Childbearing Years. You'll look at the current state of your menstrual cycle to gain understanding of your overall health. We'll identify the signs of reproductive health and how the quality of the datus or tissues of the body reflect our health. The doshas are forces that can impact these tissues, and we will explore how vata, pitta, and kapha affect reproductive health. We will then explore balanced menstruation and symptoms of imbalance by discussing the formation of the endometrial lining, the egg, the fats of the body, the hormones, and the debilitating effects of stress. No discussion on women's reproductive health is complete without a discussion on hormones, and we'll explore the effects of the monthly hormonal shifts on women's bodies and minds, as well as what causes hormonal imbalance, and how you can better manage your hormone levels. This section ends with a plan to maintain balance all month long, regardless of the dosha pushing you to imbalance. Strategies for pacifying vata, pitta, and kapha will be offered for any woman to employ now to create greater balance in the immediate future. We also explore tips for natural symptomatic relief for PMS, cramping, and irregularities in menstrual flow. In Part 3, we encourage you to consider how to create a natural change of life by considering the Ayurvedic understanding of menopause and its often related symptoms. We'll begin with a discussion on the physiological impact of menopause and why we experience symptoms before, during, and after menopause. We'll look at hormones from the other side of the reproductive years. This part includes an in-depth exploration of what causes menopausal symptoms and how to relieve them. It will cover many common menopausal symptoms, including hot flashes, dry skin and vaginal mucosa, vascular changes, loss of skin and muscle tone, weight gain, loss of bone density or thinning of the hair, anxiety, headaches, irregular heartbeat, and even loss of libido. You will receive lifestyle tips and formulas for teas you can make at home to bring you symptomatic relief. We'll end with a comprehensive plan for you to live a full, healthy life after the estrogen is gone. You can watch the program online or download it for viewing when you please, as many times as you please. The program also comes with a free reference guide in a PDF format. You can choose to go through the program, practice the principles, and see the results for yourself. And if for any reason you feel it is not for you, you can simply write to us and get your money back. This program comes with a 100% satisfaction, 60-day money-back guarantee. Ayurveda is affordable, accessible, and adaptable to every person's life. My ultimate goal is to see that people are aware that they have choices in how they treat their body. Ayurveda isn't something you have to go somewhere and have someone do to you. You have the power to change your life. I hope you will find this course helpful and experience true symptom-free health for yourself and share this knowledge with your daughters, your sisters, your friends, and even the men in your life for increased consciousness and understanding. Hello, my name is Dr. Mark Halpern, and I'm the founder and the president of the California College of Ayurveda. And I am very excited that Mary Thompson will be having the opportunity to share with you about women's health care. Mary Thompson has been a faculty member here at the California College of Ayurveda and teaching for 19 years there's very few people in the United States that have the level of teaching experience that Mary Thompson has. And Mary Thompson is not just a, a teacher with 19 years experience, but it's really the quality of her teaching that I think is most important. Mary's very well known for being concise and being clear and being inspirational. Here at the California College of Ayurveda, all the students love Mary. She's a wonderful teacher. She cares deeply about the material that she's teaching. She's impassioned by it. And most importantly, she's living the principles of Ayurveda. They've helped her tremendously in her life. And I'm very pleased that she'll have the opportunity to share how it has helped her and also how it will help you.
So many blessings to all of you as you go on your journey with Mary Thompson. Namaste. Hello, this is Kate Stillman of yogahealer.com and the Yoga Healer Real Life Show podcast and co-host of the Ayurveda Summit. And I am here to give my full endorsement of Mary Thompson. She was my first Ayurvedic teacher in the classroom at the California College of Ayurveda. And I spent my whole first year studying Ayurveda with Mary Thompson. And I just have to say, like on this path, for many of us, this is a path. Ayurveda learning is a path that starts to open us into the next level of our life. And our teachers matter. So to have Mary as your teacher on this path is is an honor. And I just I couldn't say enough great things about Mary. She and I actually had the opportunity to live in trailers on the same piece of land together and really get to know each other. Mary has a way of explaining things that's down to earth, that's grounded. She's a real person. She's a real Westerner. And she gets this stuff deep, inside out. And she's raised a child. And that's who you want to learn Ayurveda from, from someone who can really live it. So enjoy this course with Mary Thompson. Hi there. My name is Allie Chisholm Smith, and I wanted to talk to you about one of my favorite teachers of all time, Mary Thompson. I myself have been a yoga teacher for 20-ish years, including teaching uh, teacher trainees for the past decade or so. And so I have a pretty good sense of what it takes to be a really uh, skilled teacher and how to involve people in the teaching. And I have to say that that's one of Mary's greatest attributes, is her ability to bring the teaching absolutely to the person. and. Um, she bridges the personal and the professional in a way that I really haven't seen before. In fact, I mimic her often now in my own teacher training program in saying that nothing is off topic, that everything that is going on for that individual is relevant to Ayurvedic medicine. And that's particularly true when it comes to women's health issues. I have wished uh, frequently and actually asked Mary, begged her, if she would do some videos on her women's health insights because they are really incredible, really tangible, um, and different from anything I've heard before. I have quested for those for my own clients and my students. Hi, my name is Carly Bowden. I am a clinical Ayurvedic specialist. I have my private practice, Ancient Heart Ayurveda, and then I teach at several different yoga studios in Colorado Springs, Colorado. I know Mary from studying at the CCA California College of Ayurveda, and also from private tutoring with her after my graduation. I could never say enough about Mary's teachings. She is genuinely my greatest Ayurvedic teacher, and she brings so much knowledge to the table. And the most powerful thing about Mary's teaching is her ability to really take all these really big ideas, these really obtuse, etheric ideas, and, and really bring them to the ground and make them understandable and digestible. And she really brings so much accessibility to this knowledge for people in the now, for people in 2015. She makes it really possible and, and really easy to blend this really ancient knowledge with our modern lives. Um, there's so many parts of Mary's teachings that are potent that it's hard to pick out just a few. Um, but another, another one of her many, many strengths is just her ability to answer questions from so many different angles. She never once bailed on a question of mine, and I had plenty, and she, she would always find an entry point for me. And if I didn't understand one way, she would try to find a different way. She was really committed to my learning and committed to making this knowledge really, really mine. And I would take anything Mary teaches at any point in time. I would take things that Mary teaches more than once. There's just truly, truly no greater teacher you could ask for. And I, you know, anyone who gets to study, study with her is, is genuinely lucky. And I'll always be grateful for, for every bit of time that I've gotten with her as her student. Hi, my name is Karen Barbrick, and I graduated as a student of Mary's from the California College of Ayurveda in the year 2000. And I must admit, um, all these years later, Mary is still my favorite teacher. She really brought it to life, Ayurveda, she brought it to life in a, in a way that was almost storytelling and the elements and everything involved with the whole complex science of Ayurveda. Mary somehow had the knack to um, 
make it very easy almost for the um, preschooler. <laughs> That's the kind of special teaching I need. So um, here's to Mary and what a wonderful teacher and all of my great memories of that that time of my life. I've been practicing now for over 15 years and I have a business called Bending Blade Yoga and Ayurveda and um, it all started with Mary. Namaste. Hi, my name is Katrina Swoboda Johnson and I'm the owner of the Ayurvedic Health Center and Wellness Shop which is located in Bellingham, Washington. I've known Mary Thompson for several years. She was one of my primary instructors when I was a student at the California College of Ayurveda and I've continued to study with Mary beyond graduation whenever she gives webinars or classes. I have even asked Mary to supervise me with a couple of my clients. I know Mary to be someone who is has a unique combination of innately being a very skilled and adept teacher while also being a very knowledgeable, effective, and studied practitioner. I think we're really lucky to have Mary available as a resource for us in learning Ayurveda. Mary has a unique ability to take pieces of information that seem big and complex, such as pathology, and to break them up into small, easy to understand, easy to digest, but most importantly, easy to work with pieces of information. Please study with Mary whenever you have an opportunity. Thank you. Hi, my name is Linda Rosiak. Mary Thompson is my Ayurvedic practitioner. Mary introduced me to Ayurveda almost probably 20 years ago and really opened my eyes to what natural medicine could be. Mary has a great ability to be able to share her perspective and the Ayurvedic practices and bring it down to what everyday people can really understand. Both my husband and I have been working with Mary and we both uh, believe in Ayurveda because of what Mary's taught us. Thanks. Hi, my name is Saran A. Combram, and my company is Three Hearts Ayurveda based out of Vancouver, Canada. I'm currently a student of Ayurveda and Mary has been my instructor for the past year. I owe the vast majority of my knowledge to Mary. She's a favorite amongst almost every student in my class. She has extensive knowledge and experience in Ayurveda, but that alone doesn't make her a great teacher. What I appreciate about Mary is that she can deliver that knowledge and experience she has in multiple ways so that each student's specific learning style is met. You'll never hear her say to look something up in the text, and if she doesn't know the answer to something, which is admittedly rare, then she'll always get back to you because even though she became a teacher, her desire for learning never stopped. I want to be a teacher myself one day and I hope that I can teach even at half the level that she does because if I do then my students will be in pretty good shape. What else can I really say except that if you are lucky enough to have Mary as a teacher that you'll have an edge up on everyone else. That's just how powerful of a teacher she is and I'm very grateful that I had her.